and specifically, one and two look like great places to put our data. So, uh, instead of putting in one and two, we're going to select uh, the username, in this case it's AID, from Uh, we can we have to do a limit one because we can only have uh, one piece of data come out uh, uh, only one row come out from this sub select statement. Uh, sub selects are limited. You don't have a full you don't have full access to all the uh, all of the operators available. But what we can do it allows us to pull data from a different table. Correct. This is the query that we injected. If we go back to our uh, it should uh, should look something like this, where we would have the admin, username, and the password. Uh, what this allows us to do is then move on to the next step, which is uh, be able to create uh, an administrative credential, a cookie for the uh, for this user. So uh, we can do a make cookie, uh, and what this is is a very simple, a very simple script that allows us to create this cookie. Um, basically, all I'm doing is concatenating the two values together and sending it to base64 encode. Now, if we go into the min.php, uh, it's asking for a username and password. What we're going to do is using JavaScript in the URL, we can uh, set the administrative credential. Admin equals this value. Hit enter. Uh, basically, this is just telling us, yes, we've set that variable. Uh, it's still asking us for the username and password. Refresh. Now we're the administrator. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Now, if we move into the, the preferences, what we can do is general. Uh, what we can do is, by default, what PHP Nuke is doing is it's preventing all errors from reaching the user. This is actually an important step because errors give us important information about the application. In some cases, like if you're testing for SQL injection, it's vital that error reporting is turned on because uh, it's a very good way to detect that SQL injection is there. It also allows us to get something even more important in this case, which is the local path. So we're going to enable error reporting. And it immediately vomits up on us. But the most important part is here, is this. Now, there is actually a problem with this install, and that's why it's, it's displaying so many errors. It shouldn't normally do this. Instead, what we would have to do is trigger the error. And in that case, what we have to do is There is an easy way to trigger error under PHP, and that is uh, by passing an array to many functions, uh, such as, in this case, we're going to use MD5, but it could be uh, HTML special characters or a, a number of functions. If you pass an array and it's expecting to see a string, it'll vomit up and throw an error. So we're going to make a bunk user. We're going to use tamper data again. Start tamper. We're going to add a new user. We only want to tamper this one request. So admin pa add pass is going to be passed to MD5. We don't, instead, we're going to create a new. We're going to say add pass, and then we're going to add the brackets to it, which now makes it an array. Chunk. Click OK. So, warning MD5 and expects parameter 1 to be a string array given, and it gives us the path. Which is vital. So, so uh, now, something about uh, PHP Nuke. It's been hacked a lot. It has had a very, t it has a very poor history of security. But because it's been hacked so many times, that it has progressed. It is, be it is, it has been made better. Although I'm not the first to exploit at least the administrative credentials part, the administrative area has been locked down. Uh, 
there, in earlier versions of PHP Nuke, there was uh, the ability to just modify the HTML on the front page. So you could just add a malicious iframe. Currently, we don't have that ability. There was even the ability to just upload PHP files and execute them. Well, that is very, that was also removed because so many people were gaining administrative access. In this analogy, the lowest hanging fruit uh, represented by the apple at the bottom of the tree is a vulnerability that doesn't require much user interaction. It allows you to just, uh, and in fact, in 7.0 uh, to 8.0, all the way up to 8.1, uh, there was an ability to get blind SQL injection in the refer parameter. You didn't have to create a user account. You just fire off the exploit. In my exploit, you just type in the IP address and you hit enter. Uh, it is a bit slow, so I didn't, ch I, didn't I didn't choose to use that method while on stage. Now, in the center of the tree is the user area. Uh, these vulnerabilities are less valuable, but are still useful for exploiting the system. This level, there, there are an, uh, a number of vulnerabilities here, but it's not as rich. At the very top of the tree is the administrative area, and that is ripe with vulnerabilities. There are very few researchers have gone after vulnerabilities in this area because it requires a lot of uh, a lot to build off of. So in this case, OWASP A1 injection, exploitability easy, yes, very easy. Impact severe, yes, it is also severe. I agree. Detectability average. In this case, detectability, uh, you, if you fire off a CAN tool like Acunetics or the open source Wapiti, you will not find this vulnerability. It's, uh, instead, how I had to find it, I, I had to find it using, uh, more of a manual source code analysis. It turns out they have a function call called filter. If you pass in filter with one, a filter handles both XSS and SQL injection, which is terrible. When I see this behavior, it's an immediate red flag. These two vulnerabilities have very little in common and there is, they, they, they share almost no control characters. You should not be mixing these two filters. So if they, if they, if someone is doing this, then they probably don't understand what's going on. In this case, that is very true. By passing in one, it would still prevent XSS, but it made it vulnerable to SQL injection. I wrote up a simple regular expression in order to find uh, any case of where a filter was being passed one. And that's how I was able to find this. Now another thing, broken authentication session management. Technical impact, severe, yes, we're able to get administrative access. Exploitability, average, I'd say it's very easy. Detectability, average, that could also be easy. How I found this flaw is I was searching the code base for set cookie. Anytime I see set cookie, about nine times out of ten, when an application is doing a set cookie, uh, it's vulnerable. You should not be handling your own session identifier. Uh, in, in PHP, there's session start, which is a far more secure approach. There have been vulnerabilities found in PHP's uh, session management, even this year, but they were more minor and they were easy to patch. Whereas if you write your own session, uh, such as what PHP Nuke did, you're going to get hacked. Nine times out of ten. So this is, this is what it looks like. Uh, in, the, in the code at the top, PHP Nuke is pulling out the password and doing a comparison or pulling out the password based on the username and just doing this raw string comparison. This is equivalent as having a plain text username and password. We don't actually have to break the hash in order to break it, in order to log in. They are using MD5 and MD5 is proven to be insecure. It's no longer supported by NIST and it's easy to generate collisions. Collisions have been generated. SHA-1 on the other hand is still approved by NIST but, and that's because because no one has generated a collision, although there have been vulnerabilities found against it. SHA-256 is an ideal choice. And in this case, at the bottom, uh, an example of a secure logon, we're doing assaulted SHA-256 hash and using parameterized queries. Uh, and this is a very good approach. Uh, this is the uh, code I used to generate the, uh, the, the cookie. It's very simple. Like I said, it's concatenating the user ID and the password uh, with a colon and then uh, base 64 encoding it. Now another thing, PHP's default uh, configuration is horribly insecure. One thing that it has is display errors equals on. And this allows the attacker to test your application for SQL injection or even find remote paths. There are other problems with PHP's default config on every platform I've ever looked at. So on for, for, uh, for a development system, in the most cases that's okay. Uh, However, on a production level system, you must run PHP sec info. Uh, PHP sec info is a very simple PHP script. It goes through and lo looking at your configurations and tells you what's wrong. If there are any red, if there's any red in, in your PHP sec info, you have to remove it. Uh, you should remove as much yellow as possible and in most cases you can re remove all yellow altogether. But okay, 
Now there's another thing. I needed two SQL injection exploits in order to ultimately get remote code execution. Why did I need two SQL injection exploits? Also, filter bypassing. Uh, in order to exploit some of these vulnerabilities, there is actually a makeshift web application firewall built in. And I had to, I had to bypass that as well. So we're going to go into my VM. And, oh. Okay. First thing I'm going to show you is a trick on filter bypassing. So uh, oftentimes there are regular expressions used uh, to try and match bad input. In this case, uh, this regular expression was being used uh, to match input. And it's kind of cryptic what's being used, although it's simplistic. You could, you could figure this out, uh, but Regex Buddy makes it really easy. Uh, what it's doing is it's matching this code in the center. So, but what part of that is being matched? Uh, using the debug feature, Using the debug feature, it literally allows us to step through a regular expression. Okay. So it starts off and it shows us a number of fails, but ultimately when we get to step, uh, step 32, it actually finds, it finds a part of the string that is being matched. So we notice that it's the parentheses that's being matched and ultimately it, at the very end, it matches all. It even shows us what part of the query is being matched. So for instance, when we're selecting the center, it shows that part. When we actually select the parenthesis, it's showing the very beginning of the regular expression. Ultimately at the end, we have, uh, we have the, what's, what's actually being matched. Now in this case, we can use some encoding to bypass this. Uh, specifically, uh, URL encode. What's happening with the variable is it's calling a URL decode prior to its use. So what we can do is we can paste in the original code that's being matched and URL encode it again. Uh, what's happening with, a, uh, with all PHP requests is there's an implicit uh, URL encode or URL decode. All input is URL decoded at least once in order to uh, preserve HTTP, uh, the HTTP protocol. Uh, this is also useful for bypassing uh, Magic Quotes GPC because if there's any case of URL encode, uh, it's simple to decode it again. Or it's simple to, in this case, uh, at the very beginning we have just, we're printing out a quote mark, we URL encode it once and then URL encode it twice. So in this case, the URL encode of a single quote is 27 and then it turns into a 25, 27. The 25 is the percent mark that's actually URL encoded. Now, so one important thing to note is that in, uh, with MySQL uh, exploitation, you can both read and write files sometimes. Uh, there's the file privileges in MySQL, which is the most devastating privilege you can give. It's more devastating than grant. The reason why is because you can't turn a select or insert into a grant statement. However, you can, turn, you can use uh, file I.O. So in this case, we have a, a very simple select statement. And then we can tack on a union and we can union uh, a very simple backdoor such as PHP eval git e which is a simple, it's very similar to our front end. Then we can say into out file. Uh, now under, now that, that this, is, this, uh, this is an important point. Under Ubuntu there's uh, app armor and so f historically the bread and butter for exploiting LAMP systems was to union select a, some PHP code into the web root. Well this no longer works. If you go to slash var slash www and say some random file dot PHP, we're going to get an error. <laughs> Not a syntax error, but. Error code 13. That's pretty cryptic, but basically it's a general error. It's a fail. It's saying